Hey guys, thank you for taking the time to watch my video today. I really appreciate it. This robotic arm was built with the following major components. Dynamixel AX12A servos. There's four of them. The Raspberry Pi 3B microcontroller. An octal tri-state buffer on a breadboard to handle the full duplex to half duplex communications. Some Python programming and some basic Linux commands. So it took me about two weeks working full time to put this arm together. I did have to learn a lot about electronics and uh, Python programming and stuff like that before that. But the core of the work was done in two weeks. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to build this arm. I think this would be a really good family project. If you have um, like kids or people who are interested in robotics in your household. And uh, I'm using instruction packets and no third party libraries to set the ID and goal positions of the servos. Many people end up using the Robotis Bioloid CM5 control module to control the servos, but I wanted to build my own control module on a breadboard. That's why I use the Octal Tri-State Buffer. And I also use the low-level instruction packets, which send basically hex code to the registers on the uh, servos. I want to know what's under the hood, and I felt like the CM5 and the libraries hide the integral technology behind the motors. I'm basing the design and implementation on what others have already done and I do give full credit to them in the readme file of my github repository. And I'll link a lot of that information down below. So you'll want to go to the github repository and read and uh, read the readme file from start to finish because there's a ton of information on there and if you have any questions you know feel free to contact me my email address will be on um, on my YouTube uh, channel So when you come to my GitHub repositories, you'll want to click Robot Arm, and then the README file. And let's just go over this real quick. So I want to emphasize that uh, you want to take your time, you want to proceed slowly. You're dealing with uh, pretty uh, powerful motors, so you know you want to start with one motor, understand how it works and then add a second motor and understand how they both work together just so that you don't uh, end up um, grinding the gears or damaging the motors you want to get a Raspberry Pi 3B you can get it from Adafruit but really you can uh, purchase them from a whole bunch of different online vendors you'll need four uh, Dynamixel AX12 a motors which do come with um, some accessories 
and those will be useful when you build the arm. I uh, found out that I needed longer bolts to connect the F10 to the F8 frames and then to connect the F3 to the F4 frames and uh, these are the perfect sizes right here you want to get the uh, the bolts and the nuts about 14 of them should be fine and if you do buy them online and you find a good vendor let me know so I can update these links because I don't really care about uh, this company fast and all I've never used them the couplers you'll need obviously you'll need the myeloid frame F1, F2, F3, F4, F8 and you'll need them in those quantities in order to build the arm Truss and Robotics is uh, I believe they're the main distributor for Dynamixel and Robotics products in the United States and the arm stand as you saw from my video I'm using a knife block but you can pretty much get um, anything that's heavy like a um, block of wood that's heavy and uh, I hammered my um, my bioloid frame F3 to the base to the to the knife block but um, I would recommend if you can find little tiny wood screws or little, little tiny screws that you can remove easier to buy those this guy Corgatronics um, he bought a whole bunch of hardware and you can see it on his video here if you go there you can see what he did um, but he bought some really nice hardware to put the robot arm on let me know if uh, I'm missing uh, parts here because I'll update the links as well you wanna get a good quality um, high quality breadboard then get um, a 10k uh, resistor the buffer, the wire kit, and then optionally, I like these um, tin copper wire assortment kits um, a lot. They're very nice, high quality uh, wires. And then you'll want to get a wire stripper if you don't have one already. I don't like using the batteries to supply the robot arm. I rather use a bench, uh, bench top power supply or a desktop power supply. And uh, this is the one I bought from eBay. I've been actually really happy with it. I'm glad it only goes up to 18 volts and 3 amps. Even though you could probably kill yourself with one amp, I'm glad. I'm glad that the uh, that the voltage is uh, is this low. I know on Amazon you can find some that go way up to like 220 volts 300 volts and stuff like that but this is good it's a good little used uh, power supply for our project also you need a monitor I like the small form factor keyboard that I have this is the one I have right now you'll need a mouse and some helping hands the software that I'm included in the repository is uh, one is how to change the IDs so um, ID 1 is uh, closest to the the wood block the knife block and then ID 4 is is the one that basically is on the hand you know shoulder to shoulder elbow hand wrist right then uh, you want to start uh, with the slow motor movement file this um, moves the motors very very slowly and methodically so that you can kill the power in case in case uh, the motors are not behaving properly and then the fast motor movement is I would say more advanced if you already know what you're doing you can use that one and then uh, all these links here are very very important you want to look at them and familiarize yourself with them 
and I'll go over these um, I'll go over these resources a little bit later on in the in the video but there's a lot of really good stuff here and then finally you know I have the step-by-step -step instructions this is not complete so if you find that I'm missing um, information just uh, let me know and I can update this